Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 3. It says, Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear that your soul may live. Hallelujah. What is inclined? Let me tell you something. When you are having a conversation with somebody and you can't hear that other person clearly, what you usually do is you lend your ear more closer to that person so that you can hear what that person is saying. And this is what exactly it means here. Incline your ear, tilt your ears to what the Lord is speaking to you, church, today. What does this mean, incline your ear and come unto me? You know, it's an intelligent call that each one of us have to make to hear what the word of God is saying. And the application of that word, that's what God responds. He wants us to respond back by applying that word in our life. And that's living wisely. So an important decision today, you are all intelligent, right? Put your hand up if you are intelligent. Amen. You are listening to the voice of God and it says, why? Because your soul may live. Hallelujah. It's not about how we are outside. The hair, the color, the nose, the clothes that we wear, how we carry ourselves, more than that, it's the soul. God is interested in saving his soul. Amen? So what we need to do is we need to hear the word of God and we need to walk according to it. I like what Jesus said in Mark chapter 4 and verse 9. He said to them, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Amen? Amen? Do you have your ears? And is that ears inclined to what the word of God says today? Or are your, or your mind is, you know, thinking about the thing that you need to do as soon as you leave the church? Or what I need to do tomorrow? What should I take for my spouse? What should I cook? From where the money will come? For the bills to be paid? No. The word of God tells us right now, hear what he has to say. And this is what the Holy Spirit is telling us. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and I'm reading from verses 1 to 6. You know, as I told you, Jesus is coming very soon. Hallelujah. Are you excited? And we won't each and every member of our church to be completely prepared for his coming. Hallelujah. Even say little Joshua, he is in the class and suddenly he hears the trumpet or there's a rapture. He should know. So you should teach your children as pastors, we are teaching you, we are preparing you because Jesus is coming to take his bride. Yes. Hallelujah. If you are part of a church, a living church, then you would be taken up with him. So let's read the scripture. Beautiful scripture it is. Now you see, we see Paul makes it clear that Jesus what does it say here? But you brethren are not in darkness. That the day should overtake you like a thief. Now only for those people who are in darkness. Who are living as a sinner. For them it's going to be a day where the thief has come. But for us. He makes it very clear here. Because we are the children of light. He then proceeds. To explain why. It says here, for you are all sons of light and sons of day. Amen? You shouldn't be surprised. You and me shouldn't be surprised of what things are happening around us. Politically. You will see spiritually. You will see even the nature is declaring. Of what is going to come. Right? So we read further. So then let us not sleep as others do. 
Church, saving grace, church, wake up. We all need to be awake. But let us be alert and sober, it says. So Paul is referring, of course, to the light. That is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is inspiring. It's leading. It's guiding. It's teaching us to have an attitude of being prepared. Otherwise, we'll be left back. Hallelujah. Church, this is a very important message. And from this podium, there would be messages preached now and then, which would help us to prepare ourselves. So be ready. Be ready anytime anything can happen. Let's turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11. It says here, I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called faithful and true. With justice he judges and wages war. Hallelujah. First time when Jesus came, he was full of love for us. But now when he comes, it says in Revelation that he is going to come to judge. And he is going to take his vengeance against all those who have rejected the love of God. But let me tell you the attitude of our God. Whenever he wants to destroy anything. Whenever his wrath is going to come. He is obliged to alert us. Do you know this? He told Noah to proclaim the message of repentance for 120 years, church. He sent Jonah to Nineveh so that this pagan nation won't be destroyed. They would be repented. And they would walk in his blessing. And after 120 years, again he sent his prophet Nahum to the same place. Can you imagine his love for every person that has been created on this planet to be saved? So that we run into the arms of Jesus and not be destroyed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need to tell you that before we leave this place, we need to ask some questions to ourselves, some serious questions, so that we know where our ears are. Let's read 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. It says here, The Lord is slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness, you know. He is patient with us. Why? Because God does not wish that we should perish, but all should be brought to repentance. He doesn't want one single person to perish, but everyone be saved. He warned Abraham so that Sodom and Gomorrah, which was the most wicked nation, he was about to destroy. He told Abraham. I'm telling you church. You and me are like Jonah. You and me are like Nahum. You and me are like Abraham. We know the truth. We need to pray every day for the souls to be saved. Every day church. Hallelujah. We cannot live for ourselves. What is there on the table? What is there? How much gold I have made for my children? We have to pray every day for the lost souls. Because it's God's desire that none should perish. Hallelujah. 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 Is everyone saved in the office that you're working? Do you have burden for them? Pray, church. Pray for all those people who are in constant touch with you. You need to pray. 
Because God doesn't want to destroy anyone. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 13. And we are reading from verses 12 to 14. Now this message is also for the lukewarm Christians and carnal Christians. You know those who are just going to the church for the namesake. I have attended the church. It says here, the night is almost gone, the day is at hand. Let us therefore lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lust. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What another version says here of verse 14, clothe yourself with Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Doesn't it sound like we are putting on Christ as we would put a nice warm coat. That's why today I wore a long coat and came to show you how comfortable I feel. You need to put on Jesus. Don't put him on the cross by our sins. Hallelujah. We need to put on Jesus every day. You know, we think it was Pilate who killed. You know, the whole world killed Jesus. Pilate represented Roman Empire. And who were they? They were representing the entire Gentiles. And the promised children, the chosen people, Jews. All of them wanted Jesus to be on the cross. And they wanted Barabbas to be free. Sometimes when we behave wickedly with somebody else, when we sin, you know what are we doing? We are standing among the crowd who call, crucify him, crucify him. Many a time church we do, I do, you do it. And we tell, crucify Jesus. And Barabbas to be left. We live Barabbas free in our life. Hallelujah. Church, are you putting Jesus on the cross? Or are we wearing Jesus every day? Hallelujah. It's a question that you need to ask. We don't have time to, to argue with people, to fight with them. To look down on anyone. Not to forgive. We don't have time. Church, Jesus is coming anytime. Be prepared. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles quickly. To Joel chapter 1. And I'm reading from verses 3 to 4. Hallelujah. Beautiful scripture, church. It says, tell it to your children and let your children tell it to their children and their children to the next generation. What the locust swarm has left, the great locust have eaten. What the great locust have left, the young locust have eaten. And what the young locust have left, other locusts have eaten. Hallelujah. God is dealing with sin. You know, this was a curse on Judah. He called the entire nation of Judah to repentance by sending this calamity over them. You know, we shouldn't be struggling and being busy with doing stuff. What to wear, what to eat. What to drink. We don't want God to do this in our life. So that we would repent. The nature. God takes help of his creation. To teach us a lesson. 
And there are many proof right now all over the world. The entire creation is sending us enough signal to prepare ourselves. Hallelujah. You will see earthquakes. You know, these are like birth pangs. You know what is birth pangs? A mother will know it. When the child is about to be delivered, the pain starts, maybe for some, it starts four hours. Every four hours, one pain. Then every two hours, then every one hour, then every 15 minutes, then every two minutes, and then every one minute, and then it's paining continuously till the child is delivered. So this is what is happening around us. And the word of God says this. Let's understand is in Amos, Israel, he called for the nation of Israel to repent by sending drought and wind storms. You will find this in Amos chapter 4 and verses 6 to 10. But I'm going to read to you Haggai. I'm reading. Please turn your Bible to Haggai chapter 1. And I was shocked with the scriptures. Haggai chapter 1 verses 10 to 11. You know this prophet Haggai pointed to a drought as evidence that God was calling the people to get their priorities in order. Saving grace. We need to set our priorities in order. It says here, therefore because of you the heavens have withheld their dew. And the earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains. On the grain, the new wine, the olive oil and everything else the ground produces. On people and livestock. And listen to this very carefully. You know, the drought is not only on these things. But look at the last sentence. And on all the labor of your hands. Oh my God. Whatever we do, we will not see success. Because God is drawing the attention of his people so that they will repent. Hallelujah. You know, many a times when I myself go through sickness and various other situations, I ask the Lord, Lord, what are you trying to teach me in this? Quickly, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me to understand so that I learn my lesson. I, I want to move to the next level. I don't want to be stuck there, Lord. I don't like, Lord. I don't like to be stagnant. I want to move ahead, Lord. And the Holy Spirit tells me, you have behaved wickedly with this person. Go and ask forgiveness. And I have gone and I have done it. We do not have time, church. Jesus is coming soon. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking us to repent of all our sins. The Lord is telling some of us those habits that we are living in. No one knows it. Only you and your wife knows it. Or sometimes even the wife doesn't know it. But God knows it. Don't be left behind because of that silly habit. Don't be left behind. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter 16 verses 17 to 21. Hallelujah. Jesus. This is what is going to happen when Jesus returns. The earth will experience the greatest earthquake in his history. As every mountain is lowered and every valley is raised and every island is moved. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air. And out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, it is done. Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since mankind has been on earth. So tremendous was the quake. The great city split into three parts and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the great and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. 
Every island fled away and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones, each weighing about a hundred pounds, fell on people and they cursed God on account of the plague of hell because the plague was so terrible. Hallelujah. You know, the nature has played a very important role whenever God wanted to show something. You know, when Jesus was born, there was a star which was seen in the sky, a bright, huge light. You can read it in Matthew chapter 2 and verse 2. When Jesus died, when he was crucified, there was no light. For few hours, the earth was covered in darkness. The creation is sending us enough signals. And we expect all these things to happen church. We just can't come to church and go back. We need to transform our lives. And that's why the word came today. Incline your ears. Let this word be a warning to each one of us. Even I am included in this. Holy Spirit is speaking to every heart. That we need to turn away. We need to be found in the house of God. We need to read Bible every day. We need to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We need to be led by His Spirit alone. Hallelujah. Why are we telling you this truth? We don't want to preach lovely message which will help you. Only physically. The ears are tickled. Wow. That was nice, Pastor Nita. But we want to tell you the truth because the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. Is the Lord speaking to you, church? Are your ears open to hear the voice of the Lord, what it is speaking? Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go back to 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians and chapter 4 and verse 17. If you have it, I want everyone to read the scripture. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together. Now this is an explanation to the meaning of a word called rapture. It says here, caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we will be together with the Lord forever. Amen? Some of us may not see death at all. Isn't that amazing? You save on the funeral. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't want to go in the coffin. I want to meet up Jesus in the air. And he is going to come with all those whom we have lost. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to see your father. You're going to see your mother. You're going to see all those loved ones. They all would be with Jesus. And you would be caught up in the air. And that is the rapture church. We need to pray, Lord, I don't want to be left behind. Before saying an amen, every time I pray this. Lord, I don't want to be left behind, Lord. If you're coming today, I want to be with you. Hallelujah. Can this be our prayer every day? But for that, we need to put on Jesus. Hallelujah. Is it too difficult, church, to put on Jesus, who is full of love, who came to serve us, who came to forgive us, is it too difficult to put on Jesus? No. You know, Jesus, when he, he was on the cross, his father also did not look at him. And he went through such a pain People say, you know, some, some theologian says that it is you 
who put him on the cross. You and me, a Roman Empire, the Jewish nation, or it can be Jesus himself, he wanted to die. But more than anyone, it was God who wanted to see Jesus on the cross for you and me. Hallelujah! Because he wanted to save each one of us. He did not want anyone to perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Hallelujah. God was all set out to show his love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you understand his love? Can you understand God's love? And Jesus was all set out to do his best for you and me and to please his heavenly father. Whom are we pleasing? Are we pleasing our flesh? It's God who has wanted us to be with him for eternity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Turn your Bibles to Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. If Jesus were to return today, church, would he be your blessed hope? I'm reading. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. Verse 13. While we wait for the blessed hope. Now this is our blessed hope. Church, saving grace. This is your and my blessed hope. The appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. 14. Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own. Eager to do what is good. This is our blessed hope. Amen. Amen. No to say ungodly things. No. Or are you going to be filled with a holy terror? If you don't have this blessed hope, then the opposite is holy terror. Let's turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 to 17. We end today with these scriptures. Those who don't have blessed hope, they only have this terror. I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. Look at this. The sun turned black like a sackcloth made of goat's hair. The whole moon turned blood red. Does it make sense, church? You know, this, this book is acting alive. Do you know, church? This book, everything that you want to know is written in this book. So don't take it for granted. And what is going to happen? It's all written. And the stars in the sky fell to earth as figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty and everyone else, both slave and free, hid in caves. This has happened, church. And among rocks of the mountains, they call to the mountains and the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of God's wrath has come and who can withstand it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a beautiful assurance in the Bible. Call upon the name of Jesus and you will be saved. We have time now to run into our loving arms of Jesus. Hallelujah. And let's surrender our lives. No to ungodliness.